Greetings, beloveds, and peace be with you. I'm Reverend Mitzi, and I'm so very glad that you're here. Something within you is calling you to watch. Thank you for answering that divine call, and welcome to Unity of Tempe Online. So this month, I've been focusing a lot on love because, after all, it's February, the month of love. And today I continue this theme with practical tips for practicing love so that we may more consciously love and connect with others in a deeper way. And honoring the last day of Black History Month 2021, and I think that Black History Month shouldn't just be a month, it should be every day, I share a quote from MLK which feels especially pertinent right now. We have before us the glorious opportunity to inject a new dimension of love into the veins of our civilization. So true and so very applicable for our current times, right? Now, in unity, we want to feel good and we don't really want anything to get in the way of our feeling good, do we? We just want to feel good. And when things do get in our way of feeling good, we might mistakenly think, that we're somehow less spiritual. But what is being spiritual? Is it simply our connection to Source, to God? Is it simply for us to feel good all the time? How do we know if we are progressing spiritually? Well, the outpouring of our spiritual connection shows itself through compassion and empathy and love and kindness towards our brothers and sisters of earth through recognizing that we're all connected. Oneness, we talk about this so very much. And yet oneness, well, it can be challenging to live out in all our thoughts, all our words, all our actions, can't it? Especially when we see division, violence, and things that we abhor, things we absolutely should not spiritualize away. Yet in the midst of those things that we abhor, we're called to consciously love and, and take actions that support a peaceful and a loving and a kind world. And that in and of itself can be challenging, can't it? The Dalai Lama, oh, one of the most evolved beings on the planet, right? He said, although I am a Buddhist monk, I am skeptical that prayers alone will achieve world peace. We need instead to be enthusiastic and self-confident in taking action. Enthusiastic and self-confident in taking action. But what gets in the way of us being the most loving people that we possibly can? And what gets in the way of us taking action? Fear. Fear that in some way we'll be rejected. Fear that in some way we'll be hurt. Fear that, well, we'll not be heard. Fear that we'll be alone. Myriads and myriads and myriads of fears that underlie emotions that are not love. And it's easy for us to say, I let love run my life. Love, love, love runs my life. I let love rule my life. It's so easy for us to say that. But in every single instance, every single instance, is that true? You know, I'd, I'd be lying if I said that I was that evolved. Every single moment of every single day, all I do is have loving thoughts towards every single person. Jesus, the most evolved being who lived on the planet, well, he probably even had his moments when he found it 
challenging to love. Times where he had to go and retreat because people were just getting on his nerves. Can't they get it yet? Seriously? I've been talking to you people for so long. And he probably had to go retreat and get back into the consciousness of love. I bet the Dalai Lama has his moments too, where people are pressing on him and wanting him to do this and do that. And he just has to withdraw and get reconnected with his source. Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity with his wife Myrtle said, we can set love free by cultivating a loving attitude towards everybody and everything. Those are lovely words of love indeed. And they're words that we strive to live by. But then, well then that person, that place, that situation, that thing, whatever it is, it pops into our mind, doesn't it? Yep. That one, you know the one. The one that makes us feel uncomfortable. The one that, well, yeah, you know. And maybe that happened to you this past week and it left you wondering where all your good thoughts and your intentions and all of your love towards humanity went as you got triggered by something and you felt triggered. And that happens to all of us because while we are spiritual beings, we're very much living in this human experience right now. So breathe deeply, beloveds. Yes. Ah, take a breath and know that you are a powerful expression of spirit. Yes, 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 you are. And anything, absolutely anything standing in the way of you knowing what a powerful expression of spirit that you are has an opportunity to be released, released as you align with who you really are. Love, love. That's what we talk about. That's what we've been talking about these past few Sundays because it is truly who we are at our essence. Love. Before we put on all this other stuff that is who we are, love. And we want to set love free. And we want to love more, don't we? Free, free, set love free. But, but how exactly do we deepen into a consciousness of, of greater love? It's very easy to espouse a lot of lofty, lofty, lofty ideals. Yet unless such lofty ideals are backed up with practical steps, we won't make much progress. We'll just be going around in circles wondering how we do it. How do we, how do we live out those lofty ideals? So to support us with practical tips to deepen into conscious loving, I created an acronym using the word love. Love because, well, after all, that's who we're all striving to be and striving to deepen into love to remind us of who we really are and love because, well, it's who we're called to be. So let's begin with the L in love, which stands for listen. James chapter one, verse 19 tells us, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Sometimes we kind of get that all wrong though, don't we? We're very quick to speak, we're very quick to not listen, and we're very quick to become angry. We all have done it, we've all been there, but we consciously love when we fully and we completely listen without thinking of how we're going to respond. When we're in our head thinking about our response, perhaps even crafting out how we're going to respond, we're limiting God's love. We're limiting God's love. And this idea of us crafting our response, I think it begins at a very early age. I remember as a child, in London, being late for school one morning and thinking already about how I was going to respond when the teacher said to me, now, Mitzi, why are you late? I already had my excuse made up. 
or when the homework isn't due, or a myriad of other things, when the boss calls us in, or, or something, and especially when we feel defensive, we're so easy to come up with something, right? But when we listen completely, we allow spirit to reveal itself through us. We allow spirit to reveal itself through us. And our response now then doesn't come from just the small I, but it comes from the limitless power of God's ever outflowing love. And who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to respond from a place of God's ever outflowing love? Now you might say, well, of course, there are other people who would not want to respond to that. But in spiritual terms, and as we grow spiritually, that is what we want. We want to be the most loving people that we can possibly be. Now I'm going to be honest, at times I have to work on listening. Perhaps you do too. I find it especially challenging to listen uh, fully and completely to those who talk non-stop without even taking a pause. You know the types of people I'm talking about, perhaps you're one, you know, maybe I'm that person at times and maybe that's why I find it difficult to listen to others who are like that. I don't know. But I find myself when someone just goes on and on and on and on and on for a very, very long time without taking a pause, I find myself checking out a little bit, maybe even constructing my grocery list in my head or thinking about how, what I'm going to do for my message next Sunday or a whole bunch of other things. But here's what I know and here's what me, draws me back to the presence of being with that person. I know that usually when people talk to me in such a way that they're in some type of emotional distress and what they really want and need at that moment is to be heard. And so it is my opportunity to bring myself back into the present moment and to listen as fully and completely as I can. I love this cartoon. I don't know who it's by, but I love it anyways. And mom, thank you for letting me talk about my life obsessively. I know you have a life too. I just prefer talking about mine. <laughs> Perhaps that's something you can relate to on being on the receiving end of or that you do that. Now I've found a way that helps me to lovingly listen to non-stop talkers, especially those in distress, is to ask, how may I support you right now? It's a simple question, isn't it? How may I support you right now? And this, this simple question lovingly focuses both myself and the person who's talking from getting stuck in story. It is important for people to have their story heard and listened to. It's important for us to have our story heard and listened to. It's also equally important not to get stuck in that story, like a record, a needle on the record, stuck, 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 stuck. We want to move beyond that once we've had that story heard. Most people though, they just want to be heard. Like we often want to be heard when, when something's up for us. And others, when they want to be heard, they don't necessarily want advice. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they want some ideas of how to make things move forward in a different way. And sometimes we don't want advice either. We just want to be heard. And sometimes just listening is what is needed. And just listening is an act of love. And now we move to the O in love, which is open your heart. Jude, that tiny book right before Revelation says, open your heart. Love is on the way. I love that, don't you? Open your heart. Love is on the way. What a magnificent statement. Open your heart. Love is on the way. And we can make that very present for us in the present tense right now. I open my heart. I am love. My heart is open. I am love. Love is here. I open my heart. Love is here. I open my heart. Love is here. 
Yes, say it till it resonates with you in some shape or fashion. Because as we open our hearts, we allow God's love to flow through us without limitations, without judgments, without expectations, without assumptions. Ooh, that's some really fine love right there. And that's the goal of living a life of deepening love. And yet it's, it's absolutely not easy every single minute, is it? Opening us, well, it requires us to be vulnerable and authentic, to, to drop the pretense, to go beyond our critical mind, to move beyond judgment. Mother Teresa said, and I know that many of you are so familiar with this quote because it's something that I, I share so many times. It says, if you judge people, you have no time to love them. If you judge people, you have no time to love them. And yet, let's be real. It's a quote that's a heck of a lot easier to say than to consistently apply especially when people are acting in ways that are divisive or hateful or condemning, ways that open doors to violence, ways that make us feel afraid, ways that make us feel unimportant, unloved, maybe even unworthy. Yet, judgment and spiritual arrogance have no place in conscious loving. Now, judgment it's really, ultimately, it is the law of cause and effect. And we may think, well, my goodness, so-and-so needs to get this cause and effect and we need to see it happen. But I do know that the law of cause and effect works and is equal for everyone. And we don't know where that happens. We don't know if it's gonna happen on this earthly plane. We don't know if in the next dimension, we don't know. But I do know there is a law of cause and effect. And it takes courage for us to move beyond defense and offense in our reactions, to stop being spectators to life and, and defense and offense, you know, things that, that so many sports potatoes, when they're watching a game, like to shout out to their team, defense, offense! <laughs> Always kind of makes me laugh, actually. No offense. <laughs> to those of you who might love to do that from your couch. But it takes courage for us to be vulnerable, to be genuine and to empathize and to release our, our barriers of separation. That takes a lot of courage. And it takes courage, immense courage, for us to be willing and to see our part in a situation. It's so much easier at times to just play mothers. Well, I responded that way because they did X, Y, and Z, and they're not giving me X, Y, and Z, so I'm doing this, and this is why. It takes a lot more courage for us to really look at how we might be contributing and then make amends where necessary. And this is a season of Lent. It's a perfect time to make amends. We can be right or we can be love. And at times, we've all fallen into the temptation of needing to be right over wanting to be love. And sometimes the stakes just seem too high to back down. Yet, when we refuse to back down, what do we do? We block love from being revealed. Choosing to consciously love means becoming aware of our choices and our reactions. Now, we can choose to add fuel to a situation. I'm going to add some fuel to that situation right there, and then I'm going to take a little match, and I'm going to put it on the fuel, and I'm going to watch it and burn to the ground. And then we are left feeling not so good. Or we can choose to open up, soften up, and to be consciously loving. I invite you to say together with me, I open my heart, love is on the way. My heart is open, I am love. Love is here, love is here. My heart is open, love is here. Now we move on to the V in love, which stands for value. John Maxwell sa says, you add value to people when you value them. How well do you truly value and appreciate others? Do you value when people share things with you? I'm not talking about others sharing gossip or detrimental talk about others, for we know that that 
does absolutely nothing to support us in deepening into conscious love. I'm talking about when someone shares from their heart with you. It's important for us when others trust us enough to share with us that we value their sharing as it's likely a reflection of ourselves. It may be related to something that we've either worked through in the past or that we're currently working through or experiencing. And that, that may not be immediately obvious to us. And so it's important to go a little deeper and see how, how is this situation that this person is sharing with me in some way how have I worked through this? Or how is this something that I have experienced? It may not be exactly the same, but there may be emotions that come up that are similar. John Maxwell shares a beautiful story. It's a pre-COVID story of his nine-year-old grandson valuing others. And he says that one morning he asked his grandson what he was going to do that day to add value to other people. And his grandson, well, he thought about it for a few minutes. And then he said, hmm, well, today I'm going to open as many doors as possible for people. And, and I'm going to do it with a smile. And the young boy kept his word and he was very intentional intentional about adding value to people. And he proudly reported back later that night, that night that he had opened 42 doors for people and he had smiled the whole time. And he felt so wonderful about doing it. Something so simple and something so sweet, but yet he felt great about it. What a wonderful story about how we can add value. Probably not right now, because we're probably not going to have the opportunity to open 42 doors out in public for others, but we can add value in so many ways. Growing in conscious love invites us to ask at the end of each day, did I add value to people today? And doing this, well, it gets the concept so ingrained in our consciousness that we begin and end our day thinking about how we can choose to add value to others. So now the E in love, it stands for encourage. One of my favorite, favorite scriptures, and I have so many favorite scriptures, is from Thessalonians. Encourage one another and build each other up. Encourage one another and build each other up. Do you like to be encouraged? I know I certainly do. In fact, you know, I've never heard anyone who said that they were too encouraged. Excuse me, I had too much encouragement. People believed in me too much. I wish they had thought that I would absolutely fail and be an absolute abysmal disaster. No, people really love to be encouraged in their endeavors. And a powerful way that we can encourage others to be loving is by the behavior that we exhibit. It's so important for us right now, beloveds, to know that we're not alone on our spiritual path. We may not be physically together during this time, but we certainly are not alone. What a blessing it is to have practical spiritual support and encouragement. What a blessing it is to gather with you here on Sunday mornings at, on Facebook Live, to be here with these messages and to be on our Thursday Zoom and prayer calls, prayer and connection prayer calls. We may never know what lives our actions, our words and our presence may impact. And many people say, I want to make a difference in the world. That's what I'm here to do. I'm to make a difference. And the reality of it is that each and every single one of us have before us a tremendous opportunity to make a difference through our thoughts and our words and our deeds. And it brings me back to that quote from MLK that I shared at the beginning of this message. We have before us the glorious opportunity to inject a new dimension of love into the veins of our civilization. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing to do. Technology gives us an amazing opportunity to consciously love on a global scale. For love, well, it has no boundaries. 
Colossians tells us, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Binds them all together in perfect unity. Perfect unity, isn't that wonderful? Conscious love takes the initiative to cross boundaries and, and overcome barriers. And conscious love begins with listening, opening up, valuing and encouraging. Conscious love begins with each and every one of us. And as a brief recap, today we use the acronym LOVE to remind us love. Listen, open, value, encourage. That's what it stands for. Remind yourself of that. Now, when you were, many of us were at Unity of Tempe in person, you would take pictures of the slides that I presented. This might be one that you want to take a picture of on your phone and have with you. Remember what love stands for, the acronym. Listen, open, value, encourage. Listen, open, value, encourage. And deepening in conscious love invites us to ask each night, did I truly listen? Was I open with my heart? Did I value others sharing? Did I encourage others? There's a beautiful short poem by the famous author unknown that I want to share with you. What is love? It is silence when your words would hurt. It is patience when your neighbors curt. It is deafness when a scandal flows. It is thoughtfulness for others' woes. It is promptness when duty calls. It is courage when misfortune falls. And there's another short poem that I absolutely love by John Oxenham. Love ever gives, forgives, outlives, and ever stands with open hands. And while it lives, it gives, for this is love's prerogative to give and give and give. That always gives me chills, beloveds. That is our prerogative to give and give and give, to give agape love and to grow in agape love. I do hope that you have found these practical tips, four practical tips for growing in, in love helpful today. Let us pray. Loving Mother, Father, God, who is all love, we accept during this season of Lent that there may be times where we have been less than loving. Guide us through our thoughts, our words, our deeds, and our amends to consider where we may make amends and to be open if we have hurt others unconsciously, perhaps intentionally, in any way so that we may be a greater reflection of love. May we grow in this love and may this love reveal itself through our kindness, our empathy, our compassion, our thoughts, our words, our deeds, our leadership, our care, our generosity, our support for one another. We lift up all who are struggling in any way, in any situation whatsoever, and we affirm and shine the light of love from our hearts out into the world. Thank you, God, that this prayer is answered. We release, we let go, and know that it is so. Amen. So now, beloveds, it's time for our financial blessings. And I want to take a moment to just thank all of you who partner with us so regularly in giving of so graciously of your financial blessings. I also want to encourage those of you who maybe have not have um, had the opportunity to share of your financial blessings in a while that you consider to 
to, to engage with us. We really support and encourage you to do that and are grateful for you. Please join me in our blessing affirmation. I am a joyful sharer of the abundance of love in my heart. I am a joyful sharer of the abundance of love in my heart. I want to say that again because it just feels good to say it. I am a joyful sharer of the abundance of love in my heart. I'm reminded that as I give, I receive and that God is my source. Who is our source? God is our source. You can make your financial blessings securely at unityoftempe.org or if you prefer at our mail only address, Unity of Tempe 925 West Baseline Road Suite 105 slash 227 Tempe 85283. Thank you, beloveds. And to say thank you, and thank you for you, the blessing of who you are, and just all of us, we're going to have Zephyrin sing the thank you song, the thank you congregational song again today. And that will be right after our prayer for protection. So you can stay tuned for that. And so now I invite you, beloveds, to join me in the prayer for protection. And I'll go right after this into Zephyrin. So I want to just give a huge thank you to you. I love you. I see you. And I celebrate the blessing of you and the blessing of the love that you give and you receive. The prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. All is well and we are grateful. Yes, we are beloveds. I love you.
forever.